Hello, it's Diane. Today is December 23rd. It's a rainy, dreary day here in northeastern Pennsylvania. But I've spent quite a bit of time in my craft room today getting some projects worked on. So I completed this custom order for my friend Gail. And it's from this gorgeous vintage book called Tempest and Sunshine. When I had done my video showing what book covers I had available, <coughs> excuse me, so people could um, reserve some if they wanted. This book was the most popular. Three people wanted this one, but Gail got to me first. So um, I reserved it for her. And I had, a, I had fun working on this. It's got a gorgeous kind of a rusty brown color and then some orangey red in the writing. And I just love that picture. I made three signatures in it. It's got a one and a half inch spine, which normally I would do two inches probably with three signatures, but I liked keeping the spine intact. So it's a little bit fat. So that's why I used a, a hitch fastener and a hair tie to kind of contain it. And then I put some pretty rosette trim on the spine and it has my uniquely handmade limited edition stamp on the back. If you saw my video where I was showing how I select papers for some of my books, um, you saw that I chose papers out of this pad, and it's Vintage Basics by Recollections, and it is beautiful. It's 180 pages, and it's beautiful, and some of the colors were just perfect for this book. Another thing I wanted to show you that I used was, Gail, I want you to know that I made this patchwork, well it's not really patchwork, It's but it's pieced. It's got borders pieced to it. This part is all the fabric. I didn't piece all of that. But anyway, I made this um, placemat or table runner several years ago. And this fabric is what I use, my leftover fabric, is what I use to make the fabric tabs on this book. The colors were just perfect. So you get a piece of my table runner, Gail. So let's just look inside. It's got three signatures, like I said. And here is part of this, the same paper pad that I use for the end papers. And then I use my This Book Belongs To stamp. This is actually a piece of cardstock that came out of one of the Somerset Studio magazines. Certain, certain publications have, um, I think it's three or four sheets in the center of the magazine of what they call artist papers and you can take them out and use them in projects and it's it's a heavy cardstock type of paper. So I've had this for years in my stash. So I made pocket a pocket for it. I think I did it on the front and the back. Yes, I did. And this is an inventory tag and I tied some seam binding on it in a bow, put a garment pin and one of the beads that Jill Robertson made, my friend Jill. And a coffee dyed tag with some uh, Tim Holtz rub-ons. And Gail likes vintage just like I do, so there's a lot of vintage pieces in here. So this is vintage ledger paper and a little illustration from a vintage needlework magazine. This was from the 1930s. And then some uh, seam binding. This is a, a piece of that paper from the tablet and a fussy cut rose from a leftover piece of Graphic 45 paper and a vintage ad for feather beds. And this is a page from a vintage Girl Scout autograph book. There's a little bit of stamping in, in the book and here's one of the tabs. I zigzagged across the top too so it, so it would not be just a loop, so it's flat. There's another stamp. This um, paper I folded over and then folded it again to make reinforcement along the edge and stitched it and then uh, glued on some of my mother's stamps from her stamp collection. And a guest check is tucked in there. This is a piece of music paper and this is from a uh, student's piano book. Oh, I also used some pages that I had from Tsunami Rose um, oh dear I can't remember the name of it I know the name of it but I can't remember it right now the pages were just about the right size I had to trim them just a little bit narrower and the colors were good 
So here's this is scrapbook paper that looks like graph paper and a little piece of lace and there's a craft doily back there. Life of Bloom. This is Tsunami Rose Life of Bloom. So there's another piece of the coffee dyed paper and another vintage ad for knitting wool. And then this is a scrap of the paper. I have an Edith Holden book that I've had for many years um, that isn't colored. And then I saw people starting to use the colored pages from the Edith Holden books. And I've never seen this non-colored book since I got mine. I think I probably picked it up at the library for a dollar or something like that. I've had it for a long time. But I thought that the just the, the ecru color of the paper and the brown on the print looked nice with the colors of this book. So I used some of the pages out of that. And there's a peach colored ribbon that and, and lace that I got in a a lot of lace that I purchased from Julie the Paper Bag Lady 1 on YouTube. So that gives it a little pop of color and kind of ties it in with the orangey colors over here. There's another tab and some more stamps. Some more stamps. Now this is over the page, but, but it's light enough that you can write on it. Here's another of the Tsunami Rose pages and an image from a children's book, a vintage children's book. It kind of blends right in with the colors here. And there's some lace at the bottom and a couple of vintage children's cards, a flash card and a playing card. This is one, a golden card. There's a little bit of stenciling here, vintage ledger paper in the center. And some fabric and a little bit of lace. This is a nice piece of toile fabric. I don't have much of it. My friend that gave me her mother's quilt scraps gave me that, and this is one of them too. I don't know why, I just thought Gail would like toile. These are some images cut from a, a vintage woman's magazine. They were pretty fragile. In fact, um, this one tore while I was trying to put the glue on it, but you can't tell very well. A couple of um, ads from vintage magazines, and then this just flaps open. Her elbow sticks off the paper, and like I said, it was fragile paper, so I backed it with, um, I think, some of this paper. A little stamp, another piece of Edith Holden paper, and this has some crochet trim and a little piece of orange ribbon, some stenciling. This is the only illustration that was in this book. So I cut, just cut it out and glued it onto that page. And this is one of the Tsunami Rose pages. This is from, I don't remember if it's from a magazine, I think it's from a book, a vintage book about collectibles. And I just thought it was so cute. I love little cottages, hence the name of my um, Etsy shop, Pretty Pink Cottage. A couple of vocabulary cards tucked in there, vintage ones. I already put them in there and then I watched um, Gail's videos that she's doing on her how she has her craft room set up and she has a great big box of these cards too. Her box isn't the same. This is my box. So hers isn't the same box but the cards look the same. <laughs> but oh well, they're already in there, Gail. You get them. A couple of stamps. And this card was given to me in a rack or something and I don't remember who gave it to me and I only have one of them but it's nice and sturdy and I just thought it, it fit perfectly in here. There's a piece of the paper and it's again folded over and there's a piece of crochet trim stitched on it. Second signature has vintage ledger on the front, a piece of muslin, coffee dyed muslin, a little piece of lace. This flaps open, there's some vintage advertisements again, some fabric on the Tsunami Rose paper. This has a couple of coffee dyed doilies and some banners cut from scraps of paper. It can be a tuck spot. Each signature pretty much follows the same pattern. In the other two signatures though, there's a page from the Edith Holden book, the uh, non-illustrated pages that I made into a little 
pocket and this has a crack the case vintage um, game sheet in there. Another illustration from a children's book and a couple more children's cards. There's another one of those houses and instead of gluing it on as a tuck spot I tried to glue it on as a pocket and then the glue squishes in and then there's not really an opening in there it's not very big. You have to put something really skinny in there. This is just a tuck spot here. It's a nice craft card that says memories and there's a little piece of crochet trim. Some more stamps from my mother's collection. Another image from that vintage magazine and this is a Kodachrome slide. I peeled it so it wouldn't be so thick and I believe, I want to say Leslie Spears gave that to me. I hope I'm right about that. But somebody gave that to me. And this is a vintage Walter Chaffee hardware store receipt. This is from Ulster, Pennsylvania. And there's cheesecloth and fabric here. This is the third signature. This is cut out from one of the from the cut apart page that was in this paper pad. This was all just one piece that I cut out. Guest check. More music. Vintage ledger and some lace. This is a pocket made from the paper pad and some more stamps that I zigzag stitched on. This is a vintage receipt for payroll deduction from 1938. Looks like it's the flap of an envelope. It says tear this flap off carefully. The other side of it is your receipt for deductions from your payroll. Keep it for your records. Interchemical Corporation. Another vintage children's illustration with some lace and a couple of cards. This page is actually from a book that I paid full price for at Barnes & Noble. Well, I have the discount card. So I think you get what, I can't remember if it's 10 or 20% off with that card. Probably only 10. But I just loved this book and this will last me a good long time. I can't believe I did that, but I did. And so this has one page of that in here. There's another envelope with a vintage clue sheet in there from the game. More fabric up here. This is also that botanical book. Crochet trim and ribbon stitched on. There's some stenciling here. This one has this vintage card in it. So Gail, I don't know if you want to keep it in here, but I liked the pinks and the oranges with it. And it's such a cute little picture. And you can op actually open it up and use it for journaling. And it has a note on the back written for a little boy that had surgery. Um, I got a baggie, a Ziploc bag full of get well cards for this same little boy. That's why I know it was for surgery. And, but this is from Grammy, so that's really cute. And then this flap I folded over and stitched down as a pocket and then stitched on a little tiny pocket here, which has, is just room for one of the vocabulary cards. And these are some journaling cards that I purchased, digital ones that I purchased from Victoria Designs on Etsy. This is just a flap. And then this is a collage of vintage magazine images and a vintage ticket stub. And just this is modern ledger paper. And here's another pocket on the back and it has two pieces of the scrapbook paper that are for journaling. I hope you like this book, Gail. It kind of makes me nervous making something for somebody in particular. <clears throat> In order instead of just making one that I can put in my shop and if somebody likes it they can buy it. It just makes me a little nervous to make it for somebody who ordered it. 
because what if they don't like it? But I hope she does. And um, I'm not sure if I'm going to upload this video before or after Christmas, but probably I'll, probably I'll do it tonight. And that way Gail can see it. So I hope you all have a Merry Christmas. And I want to thank you for um, all of you who have subscribed to my channel. And I really, really appreciate it. And I hope to, to build um, a bigger Etsy shop in the new year. Um, with new products and things. So thank you so much for your support. Bye-bye.